Hello and welcome back to the Scale Modeling Cafe and welcome to the first part of the Tamiya Tomcat and in this one I'm going to show you how I did the cockpit. It all starts off with the Edward Brassin seats, there's a bit of photo wetch to do and some wiring and once that's out of the way we can just prime everything with Mr Surfacer Black. This is going to give a really nice base um, to the seats. Obviously the carcass of the seat is black anyway, but it's a good base for all the cushions. These seats are highly detailed, uh, lots of nooks and crannies, so it's important that the primer gets right in there and I did multiple coats just to make sure I had full coverage. And there we go, nice even coat. Okay, next was a layer of MRP, and that gives a nice glossy finish. And then we can pick out some of the detail with the dry brushing technique. So this is a mix of uh, ammo of MIG dry brushing uh, grey and a bit of black just to darken it down. Don't want too much contrast. Don't want it to look like as it's been snowing in there. Pick out that detail nicely and keep that sheen. That's what I want. So here is the dry brushing paint. This is a very light green that I'm going to use on the cushions and it picks up everything quite nicely, highlights the cushion detail and we're going to use that as a base for the subsequent painting techniques I'm going to show you in a second. So these are the paints I'm going to be using. These are the new Atom paints. And uh, I thinned it with water. It's, it's really good acrylic paint. So as you can see on the previous, um, the previous bit there, it's, uh, this is prototype. But by the time you watch this, the new Atom range will be out. So I'm going to use the glazing technique, which is a figure painting technique. And using highly diluted as I said with water layers I'm just going to go over and adjust the tone of the paint doing highlights and lowlights and just to build up that 3d effect I'm trying to stay out of the uh, recesses I want to keep them dark but inevitably uh, there is going to be a bit of um, I nearly said overspray then but I think you I think you understand what I mean I get some paint I don't necessarily want it to go, but we can fix that with a wash later if needed. Now for the highlights, so tinting the paint with um, lighter tones and just concentrating on the top of the part. And the whole idea of all of these techniques is just to build that depth and create that more 3D effect. Essentially, obviously, this is a this is a tiny item compared to the real thing, and we're just trying to fool the brain into thinking it's uh, a full-size object. So keeping the layers very translucent so they blend together and if there's any excess paint I'll just use my thumb, I've just seen it there, just take off the excess paint and very thin layers and it does take a bit of time, it takes patience but we're going to build it up. See going in, it's even lighter now, and you can see by concentrating the uh, tones as they get lighter in a smaller and smaller area, 
we can build up that 3D effect. Not forgetting the sides, of course. So this can be slightly more opaque. And there is the finished cushion. Easy to forget this little part that goes in the back of the seat. And exactly the same technique was used. So a blob of super glue and the seat cushion can go in. And now for the myriad of colour photo etch parts, the brass in seat is uh, very, very comprehensive. All sorts of levers, handles, straps, gubbins everywhere. You can see I've applied some decals as well. And just using tiny amounts of super glue, we're just going to very precisely put in these photo etch parts. So straps going in, I'll glue them in first, uh, just on the end. Allow the glue to fully cure. You could use some kicker and then uh, once dry we can just bend it into place and uh, it's fully secured at one end so it's not going to ping out well hopefully it's not going to ping out I'll try and keep the straps neat and tidy because that's what the air crew will do when they climb out to help out the ground crew and the ground crew will do a proper job so uh, hats off to the ground crew guys bit of a funny arrangement for the uh, the seat harness because it does go into the the back of the seat as well as being anchored at the top these are the leg restraints uh, quite often companies will forget these so I uh, I tend to make them from scratch but and Brassin included them on this one, which is uh, which is good news. So what these do is uh, you have some metal rings on your G pants called leg restraints and uh, oh sorry leg restraint garters, and the leg restraints go through those loops and then plug into the seat, and then when you bang out and the seat moves up the rail, they tuck your legs in and it stops flailing injuries. So these have some kind of retaining straps over the top. Uh, I don't know whether that's just for neatness or uh, or what on the real thing, but uh, they went in. Super glue's getting a little bit old, so um, yeah, it's not as sticky as uh, as the fresh stuff. But I've got some new stuff in there, which is good. There goes the all-important handle. And the top handle. And I do wish that manufacturers would create a more positive uh, locating area for these because they're so easy to knock off. Now this handle here, in fact all the handles were folded which means there's no paint on uh, around the fold so I just touched that in with a very fine brush and some acrylic paint and that's the finished job on the seat.
Now into the cockpit itself, and these are the side panels in the cockpit. And I'm going to be using the Red Fox Studios 3D printed, um, they're not decals, um, they're printed on acetate. I'll show you those in a second, but what we need to do first is a bit of prep work. So, using this uh, new ammo sanding stick, uh, having carved off the worst of the detail, uh, we're just going to use the sanding sticks just to sand it all flush because we're going to glue these acetate panels onto uh, these parts. So these just fix into the cockpit tub. And uh, we'll do the instrument panels as well, as well. So these were a little bit more awkward just because they're kind of more 3D in their nature. So pretty much impossible to get a sanding stick in there. So using a scalpel blade, we can just carve out the, um, the most prominent detail and then scrape clean the rest of it. Now it's not gonna look perfect, but bear in mind, it's gonna get covered up with the acetate. So uh, don't worry too much but we do want as smooth the surface as possible just so uh, we can help the glue out and to do its job. And we can just tidy things up with a little bit of glue and that will melt away any sort of extra bits that we don't want. The circuit breaker panels at the back, they were treated the same. And uh, once I'd prepped all the parts, using a bit of double-sided tape on this wooden spoon, we can go ahead and start priming. So everything was primed in black. That's gonna help with the shadows. And we're gonna go in with the gray uh, in a second. And there is the cockpit tub as well, all painted black. That again is Mr. Surfacer. So we're painting the grey uh, using MRP and we can use the black undercoat to help create depth. You can see there I've masked off a few areas that are going to remain black. And the MRP is, uh, is superb paint. It uh, dries to a very nice smooth satin finish it's opaque it's pre-thinned so you just put it in the airbrush and spray relatively low air pressure is what you need um, but we're going to mist on these coats and use that black undercoat as a kind of shading um, piece if you like these are the side panels now um, there's not much gray on these and uh, I just went in and I just sprayed, sprayed the grey parts, as you can see there, leaving the rest of it um, for the brush. Same technique, obviously, on the cockpit tub. And again, this is all going to help with that 3D effect. Now for the main event. So this is how the product is presented on this kind of um, greaseproof sheet. And it's just a simple job of peeling off the parts and gluing them on. You can use super glue, you can use uh, white glue, you can use um, some of the resin type glues like the Ammo Ultra type glue. And I'm using a little bit of the Ammo Ultra, just thinned a little bit with water to help it flow. And it's going to give me the working time, but it dries rock hard. And just using the tweezers just to peel off the bits. And it's just a question of peeling them off and sticking them on. And the advantage of the Red Fox system is, as I said, it's acetate. So it's solid and it's hard. 
Uh, no soaking required, it's not a decal. And uh, I do prefer this system. Some people prefer, say, Quinter Studios. Um, they think the printing is better. I, To be honest, I can't see much in it myself. And I just find this an easier system. And there you can see the instrument panel. The side panels aren't on because they're going to be put on when the instrument panel's in the cockpit. Way more precise than painting. And uh, some people claim this is cheating. I don't think it's cheating. I just think it's a fabulous product that um, is a real game changer, these sorts of things. And uh, there's no way anyone could paint these. Fact. It can be easier to leave bits on the sprue, as you can see here. You've got a natural handle that way. Just cleaning up some of the excess glue. And um, yeah, much easier to handle. And then you can just stick them off and stick them on. And you see I've uh, pretty much matched the background paint, so the colours uh, the colours work. And uh, not forgetting these side panels, you can see now these have been painted with a brush. And using the same technique on the seat, trying to build that 3D effect. And uh, yet more circuit breakers. And various control panels and these could just be uh, just glued on. Uh, you can seal them in with the varnish if you want to and um, you can uh, apply washes over the top to blend things in. Yeah, not a problem. And another advantage of the Red Fox uh, printing these on acetate is they don't stretch, they don't bend, they don't deform, they don't curl up that the traditional decal types can. So I think they're much easier to work with. I'm just finishing off the last bits. And there you go, you can see how effective they look and uh, with the painting as well. Good idea if you're, whatever you're gluing, is to scrape away the paint. So uh, you're gluing whatever you're um, sticking together is uh, going to stick to each other rather than stick to the paint and then obviously the paint can pull off so uh, i do tend to scrape away the paint where i can and those consoles just look absolutely superb i reckon Just a little bit of paint chipping now where the air crew's heels or feet would rub away the paint. I went in first with a primer colour like a zinc chromate and then over the top just went over with some silver colour. All done with a brush. Um, could use the hairspray technique but actually you can see where the instrument panels are going to go there. Uh, it's going to be difficult to see. So, uh, yeah, I just went in with the brush. Uh, still leaves a really nice authentic effect as you can see the light catching it there. Uh, this part was painted white. I'm assuming it's um, something to do with the canopy opening mechanism. And all the parts had a, uh, an oil wash and then this can be removed using various uh, things, a uh, brush which is slightly moistened with thinner and cotton buds and the like. Again, adds to that layer of depth, adds a bit of grime and a bit of wear and uh, just makes it look a little bit more authentic. Just some rain marks on the back. And now we can glue everything together. So rudder pedals going in to be honest you're not going to see those
and the control column. Sometimes I'll glue the control column in and paint it with the cockpit, but this time I painted it all separately. And the gator down at the bottom, that was done in the same technique as the seats as well. Uh, this thing just slots in at the back and that provides a nice bit of contrast but bearing in mind the ejection seat is going to sit over that so uh, you're not going to see too much of it. And the uh, final console bits takes a little bit of thought with these with the instrument panels as well making sure it's all going to fit but it's to me so it is going to fit if it doesn't fit you've done something wrong And then the sidewalls can go in, they just simply click into place. There's no worries with the uh, Red Fox things interfering with any fit. It, uh, it all goes in lovely. And here is the finished cockpit tub. So you can see how effective those uh, 3D instruments look. The, uh, you've got the glossy shine of the uh, the glass on there, and it's uh, if you're going to buy one thing aftermarket-wise, buy something like this because it really does take the cockpit to the next level, as you can see. I wouldn't be without them now. Um, I think the phrase "game changer" is very, very appropriate for this kind of thing. So that is the finished cockpit. Thank you very much for watching. In the next episode, we'll be doing the airframe. A little bit complicated with the dropped flaps and slats. And uh, it's very modular. So um, thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you in part three. Cheers. Bye-bye.